Hello YouTube world, welcome back to the workshop. You can be see by that short clip at the beginning of the video that uh, all the summer fruit is uh, very quickly ripening and uh, autumn's coming at us pretty quick. So, project we're going to do this week, I have another piece of yew. I do like turning yew, it's lovely to turn, looks lovely when it's finished. Uh, just about everything about yew is lovely. Apart from the old shape. So this is a piece of view we got. As you can see, it's pretty, pretty much three branches there. And what I would like to do, if it turns out that way, is to make a vase out of this. So what I would like to do is turn this piece down here, make that much narrower, and that will flare up. And then these three branches come up will flare out at the back of a vase and then I can hollow it down into there so as I say they will come up and as you look at the vase it will just flare out like that that's what the plan is what it turns out like may be another matter so the first thing I want to do is get it on the lathe um, and turn this down and get a chucking point on there well YouTube world and they had the camera turned on and I was just coming in here with a parting off tool just to put a tenon on that end and all of a sudden that come flying off and you see there's not actually anything holding that on there or maybe just that piece there not much at all so it was lucky I was out the firing line, lucky it went flying that way, because I'm stood this way. And good job, I have my mask and visor on as well. So let's revise our plans, shall we? So what I think I'm going to do is stitch my original plan, trying to make a vase out of this. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take it on the bandsaw, I'm going to cut this piece off of there. I'm going to cut that piece off of there. And then... I think I might cut that across there somewhere because that would give me quite a usable chunk on that end. Give it to Vaz with these flared tops and hollow straight down in there, across there. Because I think that should be nicely in proportion if I do that. So we take on the bandsaw, I'll get back to you. So there we go, YouTube world. I'll cut that piece off. You can see some lovely grain pattern in there. There's a branch coming up there, branch coming up there. And this is a piece I've got left. So you can see that's the same branch going out there, branch going out there, which is those two branches. And what I do is I'll turn this end down and put for the base of the vase. And then I'll hollow down through there. And those two pieces should flare up and give me quite an interesting lip on the vase. It's so back to the drawing board. Take two. So I've turned this down already, I've put a chucking point on the end, hold that nice and securely in there, and I've managed to get my revolving centre on the other end, just to hold it in place. And there is quite a crack running down through there where the two branches join, and I'm just hoping that there's enough wood there to, to keep them together. So the first thing I need to do is just turn that away there, so that would give me the shape at the outside of the vase. So I'll just narrow that right down towards the chucking point and take that down. The only problem I have is where that is so out of shape is for quite a lot of this, I'm only going to be cutting on the two branches on either side. So it is going to be quite a slow process until I get it down to a continuous cut all the way around the base of the vase. I have been in with some very tentative cuts with a spindle gauge and I am gradually starting to bring that down and I've now swapped over to a roughing gauge. I have sped this video up to twice its normal speed. And you see very shortly with the roughing gauge you see why it's aptly named because it does take huge weight chunks of wood away 
very, very quickly. You can see there the size of the cuts that's taken. So we're gradually bringing this down there, bringing it down into a working shape. And getting it down to somewhere where I want the base to be. I do want this base to be quite narrow because the narrower the base, the more it accentuates the flare of the top of the lip. So we just need to take this down as far as possible. get to hollowing. I think I will start by seeing if I'm forcing a bit down through there because that give me some idea where the where the middle of that is. I should lose this off of there and I should probably lose the top of that off there but I'm hoping that will give me a nice curve as that comes around there. Rather than uh, forcing a bit I'm going to go down in there with the drill. I think it's about uh, about 12 mil drill because I am right on the edge of that piece of wood there. There's my centre there, you can see how close it is to the edge of that. I think if I went through a force and a bit that would probably break off to the side and want to push it that way, whereas the drill will go straight down in there. Back clean the flutes. From the centre out seems to give me better con better cut, better size cut, and it appears to give me better control over the tool.
making inroads into it. So I'm just starting to cut on that side now. But I think it's going to be a very long process. Oh, there we go, YouTube world. I've sanded that all down. It took me hours to do that. See some marks on there. I didn't see that, but you can see it in the camera. I'm going to sand that down and I'll get back to you. There we go, YouTubers. I've sanded it all down. I wish that I had to sand by hand. Uh, because obviously the top bits of that vase, as they come flying around, that would want to bite my fingers if I got them anywhere close to that. Because it's not a continuous surface. So now I'm just applying a coat of sand and sealer. Just putting this on by hand. Just let it seal the surface. So the first coat will go in and it will soak into the wood. Although U is very hard, there's not very much will soak into it. Most of it will sit on top of the wood. So once that's applied all the way round, inside and out, that will raise the grain slightly. And so what I'll do is I'll go back through with a very fine grit, uh, probably something about 400 grit sandpaper, and I'll sand that down, and then I'll apply another coat of sand and sealer. So this apply applied the coats of sand and sealer and because I can't buff this sand and sealer up or the wax on the machine what I'm going to do is part it off and then apply the wax and buff up the sand and sealer and I'll do that on a buffing wheel. So what I'm doing now is I'm just coming in with my it's about four millimeter parting off tool, very thin one, and I'll just go through part of this off at the bottom. I'm not going all the way through because I don't want that to come flying off. I'll go most of the way through, and then I'll just use my Japan tool just to cut the last quarter inch or so. I want it here, I want it to just sand over the end, just so I'd nice, and you can see how sharp that U is. It's actually ripped. Well, it's not ripped, it's actually cut straight through my abernet. So you can see what a sharp edge that is on there. What I want to do is just bring that over, just make it nice and soft edge, so that if anybody picks it up, it feels nice. There's my Japan saw. Just go in, just saw that off. And then once that's done, I can put my buffing wheel and my Jacob's chuck in the lathe, and then I can buff that up by hand. So, what I'm doing now is I'm just buffing up the sander sealer, just try to get a nice shine on that inside and out and then what I'm going to do is just fit a sanding disc into my Jacobs truck and then just sand off the bottom of the bowl and then I can put the sand, I can apply sand and sealer and the wax to the bottom sides, outside and inside all in one go. I like to sand that off on there because that gives me two hands to hold the piece and it does give me a great deal of control over what I'm doing. So that's the bottom lead of the bowl sanded flat. I've now applied some sander sealer to the bottom of the bowl reattached my dome mop and I can go back to buffing it up here you can see now I'm applying the wax I can apply that the inside outside and the base and then buff it all up in one go together 
I buff this piece up and I didn't quite get the shine that I normally expect from um, you or Hampshire Sheen. So what I'm just doing at the moment, I'm just using a heat gun and I'm just going and just melting the wax and then just trying to buff it up again to see if I can get that really nice shine on there. I actually think I delayed turning too fast and the instead of buffing it and polishing it I think it was actually burning the wax off. I think it was, the wax was getting too hot and coming off the piece and going onto my buffing wheel. So what I've done, I've slowed the lathe right down, as I say, gone in with a heat gun, melted the wax, and then just tried to put the shine back on it. Well, there you go, YouTube world. The finished article. Not quite what I imagined, but a very pretty little piece anyway. Considering that was a piece that came flying off. So the best part of it ended up on the floor. Well, I'm very pleased with that. You are such beautiful wood to work with. And it's beautiful when it finishes. I will put a few uh, pictures up at the end of it. As soon as you can have some close-ups of it. But let's say, this is a lovely piece. don't know what you'd use it for quite. It's like I keep telling my wife when she brings it up. She said, that's very nice, Steve. What shall I do with it? It's got no practical purpose. It must be a piece of art. So there we go. Well, thank you all very much for watching. As usual, I've been Steve Howe. And this has been another great day in my workshop. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Carry on watching for the photos. A piece of you. Sanded. Polished. Some natural edge left on the side. Beautiful colours, lovely grain. A very pretty little piece.